All right, we're just gonna roll this and see how this goes. What's up guys, Nick here, back with another video. Today we're gonna break down the process of how to film and edit a commercial similar to the 45 second version that I made for Super 73. So every single piece of content that you see come through on the internet, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, whether it's photo or video, all of those kinds of pieces of content require three things to make it successful or even to make it a thing. And those three things are pre-production, production, and post-production. So pre-production pertaining to any script writing, any storyboarding, anything that you need to do to get prepared for the production and for the post-production. The production is obviously making the thing actually come to life. So the, the filming or the photography of your subject or whatever you're shooting, it's the, the bulk of what the story is gonna be. And then post-production is normally pertained to editing. So editing being, you're gonna be working with the color grading, the sequencing of the clips, and just overall making it come together to make it that thing that you ultimately wanted to create from the beginning, from the pre-production. I wanted to break this video down to show you guys kind of how I made a video for Super 73 in launch of their new line of bikes called the Super 73 R Series. I was hired to create a small little commercial for them along with a few other filmmakers and we had to work together to shoot multiple locations in a certain amount of time. I think we had about a week of time to shoot the bike in tons of different locations without showing the crowd or the public the bike. So we had to be very stealthy in the way that we were shooting and where we were shooting to make sure that there weren't any leaks of the actual product. And with location, you typically have to work with the client on set. Super 73 is such a great company to work with and I was thankful to have them on set in this situation because there's so many little things that needed to be captured and it just makes it easy to always have the client on set because you can work together and that's the fun part you know that's the fun thing about being a freelance filmmaker or just you know somebody just trying to make extra money when you're working with the client it's extremely important that you're not sacrificing your style and your talent as a filmmaker but that you're still being open with the client and listening to what they want because ultimately they're the ones that are paying you and you need to provide them with the value that they're requesting. Communication is key. So aside from the whole communication location, that's still kind of a little bit of pre-production, but getting into the actual filming was the fun part. So I got the opportunity to be able to hang outside of the back of a Prius, thanks to Super 73 for one of their employees hooking it up. Taylor, thank you. This is the kind of shots that we had to get. We wanted to get nice and low. And in order to get that, I had to make sure that I was strapped in and that I had the right tools. And so for that, I had my trusty Ronin. Big old thing. As you can see, it's still dusty from it. I have to actually clean it. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. That was one of the main things that we used. The second thing being the drone. Uh, the drone came in pretty clutch in a lot of situations. And of course, audio. Audio is extremely important. I didn't get to use as much audio as I hoped for for this shoot because the visuals were way more important. But audio is extremely important too because it helps bring depth to your film. The edit that they wanted had a lot of music. And so with the music, the audio kind of gets dumbed down a little bit, which in this case worked out because we were pressed on time. So anything, my general rule is that anything that moves in an image, not the image itself, you know, it's not the camera, camera movement. Whatever is moving inside of the image needs to have audio, some form of audio. You can always recreate that in post. For this film, we weren't able to capture too much of the natural sound that the bike makes on the road. So what I did is I actually went in and I slowed down the sound of raindrops and that made it sound like the tires were spinning on the road. Those are things that you can do to get creative and that's what they do in big movies. You know, that what I did was a very cheap way of doing it, but you know, it helps. So find ways to add depth. That's in the post-production side, but when you're on set, it's always great to have some sort of backup audio. So I have my main Rode NTG3, but I had a second filmer who was capturing second audio, which is great. Okay, so post-production. To break it down nice and simple, because editing can be so complex, to break it down, when you have your footage, I just had a little bit of a brain fart. What I normally do is I, I organize all of my files 
in Finder itself. So I add it on a Mac. And with that, I, I add all my cameras, I add all the days, I add all my audio, all my music, everything that I need to start editing, right? So that I can just sit down and just work through it, not have to go through and search everything. I first do all of that and then bring it into my editing program, Premiere Pro, and then start creating selects is what they call it. So you take all of the footage or I label everything with a color. So I know that when I'm editing, I know, okay, this is from one day. Like for example, I took all the desert clips and I gave them a tan color. Right? Then I had California Hills, so I put green on it. And those are the things that you can do to make it easier for yourself when you're editing. So once you have all your footage colored, I'm gonna go through and create selects. With that footage, I basically put it all on one timeline. I go through, I use the blade tool, I just cut and then I drag up the, the footage that I want. And then once I have that, I consolidate all of it and then bring it down. And then once we start the editing process, if I have multiple shots that might look the same, but there's a little bit of difference, like maybe the, the rider does a different move, but the shot is still the same. I still keep those shots and then figure out which one fits best with the music and work my way through that. So once all of your selects have been made and you're ready to begin the editing process, I drag in my music and then I go through my music and I first find out how long they want as a film, right? That's in the pre-production side. So I trim down the music. I try to find the moments where they kind of match. So if it's a three minute song and they want a 45 second edit, I have to find a moment where it builds up and then it kind of fades out. So I have to cut the music down and figure out where the best parts are and then make that into 45 seconds. And then I start beginning the editing process where I can take all of my highlights, bring it over and I create a timeline, send it over to the client. Once they're happy with a basis starting line, you can start adding effects, your color grading, and then more sound and then continue the revision process from there. Hopefully you guys learned something new that you can take and scale up your business somehow, whether it's photo or film. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.